This is my latest iMac G4 20 inch mod. Uh, for those of you who uh, watched my previous videos or, or know my blog, you can see that this looks pretty similar to my previous iMac G4 20 inch. There are some very key differences, however. The first and foremost is that this is an all-in-one using an ECX board like the previous one, but the ECX board is actually a mobile Sandy Bridge board. It's called the Keek 6100. What makes this board so special is not only the fact of its minuscule size and the fact that it is a uh, Core i Sandy Bridge board, but it's also the fact that it pretty much natively runs uh, Mac OS Lion. Uh, if you remember, my previous ECX board was a Core 2 Duo that unfortunately was, uh, was not Hackintosh compatible. This one, however, uh, with few exceptions, including uh, the audio, which I was able to replace with a USB audio uh, card, as well as uh, S3 sleep, although it does do S1 sleep without a problem. Uh, except for that, it really runs uh, very smoothly, uh, Mac OS Lion. I did use uh, the native uh, a retail uh, version of OS Lion and uh, Tony Mac's uh, Unibeast, which really uh, booted uh, right up without really, really any problems. So the other key difference is that my previous uh, modification uh, used uh, parts from an Apple Cinema display in order to get the LCD working. Although the LCD was from the iMac G4, I did have to modify the wires in the neck in order to make them compatible with this uh, LCD controller that was from the Apple Cinema display. For this one, however, this is the complete components of the iMac G4. There's no additional controllers used from any other monitor of any kind. I was able to wire the LCD using the completely intact wires in the neck uh, to a DVI uh, cable. And then I was able to supply power using a Pico power supply that supplies not only the uh, computer but the LCD and the inverter as well. I did also have to supplement this with a DC-DC 12 volt to 24 uh, volt up converter, however, as the inverter does require one line of uh, 24 volts. Except for that, this is really the uh, completely native iMac G4. What's interesting is that the, uh, the LCD housing and the white plastic dome you see here were actually never in an iMac G4 prior to this. They are uh, new pieces and they were replacement parts. The only thing that actually was previously used in a computer was the LCD screen itself as well as the metallic Faraday cage which is, uh, which is the actual structure uh, behind the white plastic uh, dome that gives it its, uh, its uh, form and function. Uh, and that is obviously uh, not visible. So uh, looking at this you can see that this is the iMac G4. The screen as you remember is just like the iMac G4's that you would find if you were able to uh, purchase a brand new one today. You have complete 180 degree rotation and able to move it up and down and tilt and uh, swivel as well. In addition, you can see the uh, Apple Pro speakers. Uh, I did have to connect these to uh, an iFire adapter. Uh, there are no FireWire ports on this machine, so I did have to convert the FireWire to a uh, DC to AC plug uh, in order to get it to work. The, uh, the FireWire actually just supplies power. The actual sound is uh, routed through a 3.5 uh, millimeter audio jack, which is uh, used uh, connecting to uh, the uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the uh, back rear panel of the computer. Uh, also, I did use the original uh, keyboard that came with this and a uh, Apple Pro mouse as well, which is wired. I do also have a Bluetooth mouse that I'm currently not showing here. And I did keep the, uh, a Bluetooth trackpad, obviously using Lion, the multi-touch gestures. Uh, it's very useful to uh, have a uh, trackpad available to do that with. So. Uh, because this is a uh, Pico power supply, <clears throat> I did jump and I did hook up the jump connected to a hard uh, power switch. So you do have a hard power switch in the back, as well as just the normal power button. So we press it and then we can boot. See this is booting up uh, the uh, Keek 6100 and you're going to see the uh, Tony Max. boot screen as it loads, uh, again, Mac OS Lion. I did incorporate the original power indicator light here, which is uh, hooked up to the motherboard. I wanted to get this as close as possible uh, to, the, uh, to the original iMac G4. So let me just take the keyboard here just to log in. Okay. 
And here you see uh, Mac OS Lion. And just to bring this closer, uh, make it more visible. And again, the uh, Apple Pro mouse and also the, um, the trackpad, if you wish to use it as well, hooked up to a uh, Bluetooth dongle, uh, which connects to one of the USB ports in the back. But just to show you about this Mac, So this is a uh, Mac OS X uh, version 10.7.2. This is a 2.49 uh, gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor. It has uh, four gigabytes of uh, 1067 megahertz DDR3 RAM. And you can see that this is actually uh, in, this is actually detected as a MacBook Pro. The reason for that is that the Keek 6100 actually uses a mobile chipset. Of Sandy Bridge. There is actually a, a big advantage to this as the mobile chipsets tend to actually emit less heat than their desktop counterparts. So this is actually uh, the same processor which is found within the MacBook Pro as well as the same chipset and it actually uses the same uh, Intel HD onboard graphics that's on the, the, uh, the MacBooks as well as on the, um, uh, on the Mac Minis as well. So um, this is obviously natively interpreted by Lion as it's used on, uh, on Apple's own equipment. So. So show a couple features. Uh, one, you know, in terms of uh, the display, but I think uh, one thing that I find is uh, somewhat interesting is uh, that the display is detected as iMac. So uh, I think that's uh, pretty interesting that the uh, there is a signature that was put into the original iMac G4 display so that you know it would be uh, interpreted as such. Uh, it is uh, a 16 by 10 display. Uh, it is running at a uh, full resolution, which is uh, 1680 by 1050. Another thing I want to point out is just uh, in terms of uh, sound is um, you can see the microphone here and this uses the original microphone that was within the LCD housing uh, which I've rewired to be able to be used with the Kik 6100. So I tried to make this really as close as possible uh, to the original iMac G4 in every way that was, uh, that was easily able to do. Uh, in addition, the Apple Pro speakers and just to kind of hear what they uh, sound like, I'll go to Apple's homepage and we'll play a, you know, an iPod Touch uh, TV ad. So make that full screen and we can make that to the video full screen. Again, yeah, it's very, uh, you know, very clear video. Um, Sound is excellent uh, coming from uh, the speakers, and this is using uh, the iFire, which is used as a, a very small amp. And then this is uh, the Apple commercial, and just to uh, you know, exit out of this. So just to uh, tell you about the, uh, the ports on the back, we do have um, four USB ports. Two are being used. One goes to the keyboard, which does have two extra key, uh, USB ports itself. Uh, the other one uh, does go to use, is used by the uh, Bluetooth dongle. And then there are two free ones. There's also a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Uh, this is, means that you could connect any 3.5 millimeter, uh, you know, uh, normal uh, audio jack source. You do not have to use the uh, Apple Pro speakers with the, uh, with the Firewire if you don't, you know, if you don't want to. Any uh, standard speaker, uh, powered speaker would do. Uh, there's also the uh, power adapter, which does connect to uh, one power brick. Uh, so that is a just a simple plug-in adapter, and um, um, and there is again the hard on on off switch as well as the uh, the regular power button. Now again, as I had stated before, there is a uh, a DVD burner uh, which is in here, and simply by pressing the eject button on the keyboard, uh, if you remember, you you can simply eject and then you know bring back in the. Um, uh, the uh, DVD burner, which is a you know a nice feature of it. I do think that the DVD, uh, you know, the optical drive ejecting, was one of the real signature features of the iMac G4. So I was very glad I was able to keep it and incorporate it into this design. Just to uh, tell you again, you know, what's really found uh, within here. I do have uh, on top is the uh, Keek 6100, which is the motherboard. The reason I put it on top is because of uh, heat issues. Obviously the holes really right here are really the only access to air that the motherboard has. So 
to be able to put it on the top really is, is great for heat issues. Putting it anywhere else really would almost uh, cause almost no airflow. As you can hear, there's really the fan's barely audible. Uh, it's really whisper quiet, and uh, although it does get louder under uh, heavier loads, it's really quieter than the, uh, the fan on the original iMac G4. Uh, below this is uh, the, the, the uh, DVD burner drive, uh, which is in the uh, same position using the same uh, cradle uh, that, was, um, uh, that was found within the original iMac G4. Around that is the Pico uh, power supply as well as the DC-DC up converter. Uh, going down uh, further, we have the, uh, the 2.5 inch solid state drive. And the reason why I put that at the bottom was uh, that the, uh, the iMac G4 actually had an access panel within it. And the access panel was there to be able to easily upgrade the RAM as well as to uh, add an airport or Bluetooth card. And um, because I was um, you know, able to put the solid state drive at the bottom, this makes this drive very easily uh, swappable. So it's, uh, you don't have to take apart the whole computer. Uh, in order to uh, access the drive, it's very easy. You just undo the bottom plate, and you can easily just unplug the drive from uh, the uh, SATA connector, and um, you can put in then uh, another drive. I figured that is probably what I'm most likely to uh, swap out uh, in the future in order to uh, you know upgrade or change um, uh, this design. The rest I'm probably uh, going to you know leave alone at least for some time. Also, just again uh, in terms of uh, other capability, there is uh, Bluetooth. Um, as noted, just a, a simple dongle on the back, and there is Wi-Fi. Uh, the Wi-Fi is internal. It uses uh, the Broadcom uh, uh, Mini uh, PCI Express uh, slot that uh, is uh, on the Keeks board, and uh, since the Broadcom is uh, what is used in the uh, MacBooks, uh, MacBook Pros as well, obviously it's natively compatible as well. There is actually a Wi-Fi antenna, which actually runs between the metal Faraday cage and the uh, white, uh, white plastic dome of the iMac G4. And I was able to hook up the, uh, the Wi-Fi uh, directly to this, so there's no antennas on the back or anything like that. There is also a gigabit ethernet port on the back. This is an extension of the gigabit ethernet, uh, which is found on the, uh, on the uh, Keeks 6100 itself. So obviously this is something I've worked on for, um, for some time. And, um, you know, I think it's turned out great. I think this is one of the uh, greatest designs for a computer. Uh, really, the ergonomics are really, are really unmatched uh, in terms of how easy it is to manipulate the monitor. I think 20 inches is a, a pretty good size for the monitor as well. So uh, I'm obviously thrilled by how this came out. And anyone interested in, uh, in doing this, I do have guides on my, uh, on my blog for both the 20 inch as well as the 17 inch versions of this. So if you're interested, please check those out and thank you for watching.